Hello everyone, my name is Fanula Dunleavy and I work for the New Lodge Dunker and Community Health Partnership, which is a healthy living centre in North Belfast and according to NISRA statistics, an area of high deprivation. Today I've been tasked with talking about our experience of delivering the CFI programme during COVID. So the CFI programme is aimed at families with children up to the age of 12 years and each year a minimum of two small events and two community events take place with the assistance of a steering group. But as we all know, year two was very different. We have a fantastic steering group and they are Trisha Brady, the family support worker for Supporting Families North Belfast, Shauna Gibson, health development worker at Top of the Rock Healthy Living Centre, Naomi Davison, scientific officer for Food Standards, Kerry McCauley from the health improvement team at Belfast Health and Social Power Trust, Denise Walker, health visitor for Smile Sure Start, and lastly, Gronya McMahon, who is a senior community dietitian for the Belfast Health and Health Development Unit. So the second year of the current CFI funding program came around quite quickly and was, as everyone knows, a huge challenge, particularly for small community organizations. There were many challenges. With lockdown restrictions, how do we recruit? How do we go online and how do we fully engage participants as a lot of the work that we do is built on trust? So how do we engage new families to our services? The risk assessment was a large document to work through on how we were going to work safely with staff and participants. For example, managing the grocery shopping as during the first lockdown, there were long queues, the purchasing of wipes and PPE, garden visits and deliveries, etc. Shopping had changed over the nine months. Signing people up. GDPR had to be adhered to. So privacy notices, notices etc., was sent to participants beforehand. For example, each program had a WhatsApp group where everyone could see each other's number. So we had to ensure that everyone was happy with this and that the group was deleted when the program was over. This was in addition to what we would do normally. So a lot of time was spent reassuring and supporting people all the way through the program. Recruitment. We usually work with the local schools and community groups, but this was not possible during the first five months of COVID. Retention of participants for the four food value programs as er during the early lockdown, food insecurity was paramount. At the beginning of the lockdown, we secured funding from various sources to meet presenting needs, such as food insecurity and utilities to help with the additional cost of everyone at home. 68% of our participants were on universal credits, 17% furloughed or unemployed as a result of COVID. So this brought a whole new population to our services. And then the working poor, those were families of four, five, six, seven, and eight children. So Food Values is a budgeting program for better nutrition developed by the Health and Social Care Trust in Northern Ireland. It is broken down into four sessions, shopping savvy, preparing to shop, the cost of convenience, and look before you buy. This slide details pro program preparation then, the first year of CFI, and now the second year of the CFI program. So then in year one, pre-program preparation took roughly eight hours. So this was before the program started, i.e. to recruit, source a venue, and organize a facilitator, etc. Now in year two, risk assessing. This took up a huge amount of time and kept changing. We are a small organization with four staff, of which two are part-time, and we don't have a department to go to to help with this. The risk assessments also changed during this time. Recruitment. This happened various ways online. We were still in contact with the schools and those community organizations that were working remotely who identified families for us. Supporting the facilitator to produce the three-minute WhatsApp video clips, as we were all hesitant at the start, but one facilitator, Deborah, was prepared to try it out. It was a joint effort, trial and error, and crossing our fingers and just hoping for the best. GDPR and privacy notices for WhatsApp groups. We used our personal mobile phones as we have no budget for work phones. One parent wanted to be part of the WhatsApp group, then decided she didn't. So a garden drop off and a weekly phone call happened instead. In week one, an admin pack was included in the grocery bag evaluations, self-addressed envelopes for return of paperwork, the 101 square meals recipe book, 
eat well guide, traffic light systems, portion plates and other resources were put in poly pockets with a packet of wipes to wipe down the ingredient packs again adhering to the extensive risk assessment. Shopping, there were queues, limited stock, only allowed to purchase three of certain products. So this required at least four, four shop visits. Eventually I went online for dry ingredients, but getting a slot was difficult. And we asked the local Tesco and spa shops, would they help us pack, help us with the packs? But they said no, they, did, they didn't have capacity themselves as there was staff on sick leave or staff shielding. When we considered all the requirements, we were fearful in how to pull it off. It was a big leap for us. So this is our flyer that we sent out online in hard copies to the schools to put in the children's school bags when they were at school in the autumn. And this is some of the list of the online resources to accompany each food value session. Many of the dietetics team were de redeployed across frontline services during this time. So the dietetics department online information didn't come through until late October, early November. So this list we pulled together ourselves. When the dietetics resources were ready, we were able to link in and participate in an online healthy eating on a low budget session, which had great tips in freezing food, looking at use by dates, et cetera. So this is our first um, WhatsApp recipe clip. Uh, we now have seven clips, uh, taking into account seasonal recipes. Um, half of the recipes were vegetarian, uh, which led to online discussions on the environmental impact of meat and also the sourcing of halal produce for participants in the last program. The clip is three minutes long, so I'm just going to show you just a few seconds of it. So shopping for ingredients. This is to give you the scale of what we needed to buy each week. There were queues, online was difficult to get slots and limited numbers and availability of some products. So this was very time consuming. So it was resource heavy. The families were left with a lot of store cupboard staples as each week they got the full list of ingredients for each recipe. So again, this was a game of trial and error. Deliveries for the first two programs were initially on a Monday and we changed this to a Wednesday with a drop off between 9am and 12. We had to ensure that the delivery of the grocery bags happened with appropriate PPE. There was also the element of privacy for the people participating as we were doorstepped a few times. When we dropped the ingredients, the participants wanted to share their experience of the program and of life in general. They said it was the best day of the week with the element of surprise and what the family meal would be that day. With one group in particular, there was some healthy competition to try other recipes in the 101 Square Meals book, which was great and encouraged chat on the WhatsApp, sharing tips, creating a sense of tenacity, strength and resilience within the group peer to peer. So there was great engagement on the community chat, on the group chat. The majority of participants had family members help out. The teenagers got involved as the food values covered the home economics part of the school syllabus. A comment that came up quite a few times that this was the best program I have ever done. It was just brilliant. So as a Healthy Lemon Centre, we thread the Take 5 program through all our program deliveries. Take 5 stands for connecting, keep learning, keep active, take notice and give. The CFI program embodied all five elements. Connecting, online with each other and with family members who helped make the meal. Keep learning, 
new recipes, how to improvise when you don't have all the utensils. Notice looking at different ingredients when shopping and questioning how to use them. Also using ingredients that you wouldn't usually shop for. And we're surprised that the family enjoyed them, especially the kids and give. Some made extra for elderly neighbors. So again, also connecting. So for us as an organization, we stepped out of our comfort zone and ran with the online program. Yes, it was extremely scary and it was time intensive and no two programs were the same. We delivered four programs. Program one was to 10 families of 40 people. Program two to nine families of 23 people. Program three to 10 families of 37 people. Program four to 13 families of 52 people. So in total, year two of CFI, with all the restrictions, we, New Lodge Dunker and Community Health Partnership, delivered to 42 families, a total of 152 people, and 608 nutritious family meals. And the families then, again, were left with plenty of resources and store covered ingredients each week. So retention level was 100%. As a community organization, we believe that this program has been a new way of working. Yes, a challenging way, but a very effective and impactful way of addressing healthy eating at a time of food insecurity in North Belfast. Thanks for listening.